I'm Beatriz Pisano, and from Aluna Theater, we bring you Radio Aluna Theater. An exciting new series of stories by artists and pioneers of Latin Canadian theater. Este podcast también está disponible en español. I am thrilled to begin this series with one of my favorite plays, Leo, by the multi-talented Rosa Laborde. Leo is a story of love and the loss of innocence. It follows three young friends, Leo, Isolda, and Rodrigo, as they come of age in the late 60s and early 70s in Chile. In the background of their lives, Salvador Allende will be elected Chile's first socialist president, followed by a military coup and the brutal dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Leo was first produced in Toronto at the Targon Theater in 2006 under the direction of Richard Rose and has since been produced many times across Canada. The first scene opens in a dark room, lit by a single light bulb. Absolutismo, autoritarismo, colectivismo, comunismo, democracia, humo, fascismo, federalismo, imperialism, liberalism, a smoke, nationalism, socialism, smoke, totalitarianism, utopianism, smoke, 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 theories, doctrines, principles, bullshit, words to live by, words to fight for, words to kill for. <clears throat> and the current dragging you down, the whirlpool, the whirlpool, like the universe knows we're entering into a darker place. There is nothing left to see, my feet, my fingers, my blood, and nothing. If there is nothing, if I see nothing, if nothing sees me, to cease to be seen, to vanish from sight, to cease to exist or be known. No, Rodrigo, just follow me. Please, hombre! No! Abre los ojos, mijito. Open your eyes, Leo. Yeah, open your eyes. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. Feliz cumpleaños, Leonardo Francisco Rosas Mella. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. May I have a piece of candy? No. But... No, one candy for everyone. It's only fair. No. Yes? But it's my birthday. I'm leaving, Leo, if you don't share. Please. Leo hands Isolda one candy. Isolda steals two more without him seeing. Thank you, Leo. Isolda kisses Leo on his cheek. He likes it. Leo gives Isolda another candy, waits for her to kiss him. Isolda doesn't. Dame un beso. Isolda kisses him. No! Mommy! Leo, I'm sorry. What? Well, your father. Uh huh. It's really hard when people leave. Yeah, leave. I'm done with my father, so if you want him... Parents aren't like children, Soli. You can't just give them away. Shame. Yeah. So we'll do a ceremony, I thought, like an offering. We'll dig a hole in the ground. I brought candy. Good. There are four candies, so we can each have one and then one for the hole. Does the hole really need a candy? It's part of the offering. It's a waste of a good candy. What do you propose? I will have that candy. If you have that candy, we'll have had one and you'll have had two and it won't be fair. Better we should be fair to the hole? Now what? Now we bury our deepest secret. Why? Because that's the plan. Because why? Our secrets will grow into the ground like roots and will be part of Chile forever. I don't want to play anymore. My father sleeps with my nanny. That's my secret. Uh, Leo? Yeah? Your turn. My father disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. Okay. He went to fight in the revolution with Che. Guevara? 
but things got bad, so he escaped on a freighter, a freighter that disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. No one knows about it. If no one knows, then how do you know? Soli. Oh, good secret. Now bury it. Leo? I'm right here, mommy. Can you see me? No, Leo. Put on your glasses. Put on your glasses and you'll see me. No hay nada más que ver. There is nothing left to see? Leo covers his eyes with his hands. They're playing hide and seek in the backyard. A few years have passed, and Leo, Isolda, and Rodrigo are now 11 years old. Count out loud. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ready or not, here I come! I see them behind the hedge, crouching on the dirt and stone pathway leading to the backyard. It is a good hiding place. Not the best, but good. They don't see me. They are pink-cheeked, shining eyes, innocent and perfect. Their fingers are interlaced. Her foot gently crosses over his. He leans toward her and kisses her softly on the top of her head. She smiles. Leo! He found us. Look, Rodrigo. Not bad, Leo. Good time. Thanks. Um, I have to tell you, Leo, that Isolde and I are engaged to get married. You're 11. I like to plan ahead. I'm sure you'll find someone. Doubt it. Leo. Triangles fascinate me beyond any other shape, forever reminding me that not one exists, real or imagined, that is free from sharp corners. The Bermuda Triangle, also known as the Devil's Triangle, is one of the greatest mysteries known to man. Coast guards and scientists claim that contradictory currents could quite possibly chew matter up until it is nothing but sand and pulp stroking the stingrays as they swim. But I believe that there is another force involved. Something other that we, with our compasses and our well-ordered fact finders, may not be privy to. I believe it is possible that something or someone may vanish so completely that we may never have an answer to the eternal question, why? That was good. Your language. It's very mature. I'm 14. You should be a poet. Why? You suck at soccer. Thank you. Hey, Leo, write your poems with this. A state-of-the-art black pen with gold detailing. That's nice. And for only 15 pesos, it can be yours. Where did you get that? From my supplier. I'll give you 10 pesos. 12. It's a stolen pen. I don't steal. This is business. Your little sister's toys, your father's cufflinks, your mother's nail polish, your nana's candy. My father says it's just a phase. You traded your family's nana to some grandfather for a set of false teeth. So I went too far. Look over there. No. My father always says you are not a horse. Refuse Refuse to wear wear blinders. blinders. There is a boy younger than you walking through traffic selling bananas. Do you see him? See? Because I love you, I remind you that we are so lucky. Think about it. Are you thinking about it? Yeah. Are you? Did you know that poverty is the number one cause of death in Chile? No. Where did you hear that? I don't remember. I've never heard that. The poverty is bad, Leo. Very, very bad. Yeah, but who said that poverty is the number one cause of death in Chile? Don't interrogate me. Did you make that up? It's not making it up if it sounds very, very true. It doesn't sound very, very true. You don't die from poverty. You die from poverty-related illnesses, starvation, or infection. You don't just die from poverty. I think a lot of people in Chile are dying from poverty-related illnesses, Leo. Yeah, probably. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Want me to steal a can of condensed milk and we can eat the whole thing? You shouldn't steal. And my father shouldn't sleep with a nana, so... So... So, I can do what I want. You can too, on account of your dad dying. He disappeared. Right. Disappearing and dying are not the same. Don't get upset. I will not get upset. I will breathe slow and long so a volcano doesn't erupt in my chest. I will not care that my mother doesn't see into my eyes ever, ever again. That minnows know my father better than me. That the two people I need most would happily have each other without me. I'll shut my eyes and make love to the darkness. Can you see me now? No. Nobody can. 
Not when I've dropped 12,000 houses to the Earth's core and blue flames bite my breath. Times are changing. It is 1970, a year of election in Chile. Leo's poem has just been published in the school newspaper. If it isn't published poet Leonardo Mella. Where did you get that? Hot off the press. First edition, page two. Ah, Leonardo Mella is 16 years old and in his third year here. This is the first time his poetry has been in our publication. We hope it won't be the last. It's just the school newspaper. <laughs> just the school newspaper? It is a fine periodical published by the faculty and contributed to by genius students. Unnamed Corners by Leonardo Mella. No, don't. <clears throat> there is the sofa you sat on, blue. The right arm stained with sun where the window licked it holds the seashell ashtray balanced on its thumb. In seven years, we have not moved it. We will not move it. Your slippers, abandoned rabbits, nuzzling the foot of your bed, yearn for your toes to enter and fill the empty hole. You left. In every fry pan, shoelace, teacup, remnants of you. Gasping for air in warring waters in unknown depths at the base of my skull in the catch of my throat, I don't breathe anymore. But in the safety of corners, the unnamed corners, between the sink and the fridge, the door and the wall, the bed and the sill, where you never lived, I live without you. You have a gift. I have a pen. Give that to me. I will not. I'm saving it. I'm framing it and putting it on my wall, a Neruda in our midst. I'm getting you a hat. It will take centuries for any poet in Chile to even peek at Neruda's talent. Give that to me. When I become president of Chile, will you write my speeches? Only if I agree with your politics. You inspire me. Stop. You do. I mean, here we are in La Reina, this little family barrio in Santiago, like we've been all these years, sheltered. You write a poem. It's just a poem, but it's beautiful. It is. And it's just a beginning. That's what I think. But with that one little beginning, I can see the world, like, opening into all these other worlds outside of what we've known here. And it's like... What? Here you are in a sweater vest, you know? My mother made it. It's very nice. Thank you. But under that sweater vest, it's like we're living these superficial lives on the periphery. And all that time, there's this exploding fire living underneath and we don't even notice. There is a fire. You write from there. Your poem, it reminds me there's something underneath. There's an awareness of humanity, like you've connected to a truth in you and that becomes... Go on. If you tell the truth about how things really are, if everyone does, not just poets, change happens. Is your mother voting? I think so. Is she voting for Allende? I don't know. Well, tell her. We have a great shot at this. Imagine it. Our copper will belong to us. Our miners will be treated with dignity. We will no longer be stepped on by imperialistic opportunists. I thought we were talking about my poem. <laughs> we are. It's the same thing, really. A revolution of the mind is a revolution of the people. In your words is the ache of humanity, albeit personal. But there is the need for resolution and freedom from pain. And it's true, right? Honest. Your words and Pablo Neruda and Gabriela Mistral, the songs of Violeta Parra and Victor Jara, are passion. We are a country to be reckoned with, not just some third world strip of land to be owned and run by the United States of taking over everything. Think of it, Leo. If Salvador Allende is elected, in three days from now, our little country will be free. Are you ready to free your minds? And Salvador Allende is elected the new president of Chile, becoming the first socialist leader in Latin America. All the great poets were stoned on something. And then they die. Everyone dies. Some sooner than others. Soli, I don't think this is a good idea. But it's a free country. It's true. Allende is president. The beginning of a new world. We have to celebrate, don't we? Go ahead, Soli. Light it. Yes. Do you feel anything? I haven't even inhaled yet. Now? Okay. 
A little. Give me some. Oh, yeah. I love this. Rodrigo, take. Do you like it? Interesting. He likes it. Not necessarily. Save some for us. Oh, thanks for the experience. How do you feel? Exactly the same. You had tons. Well, it appears that I am immune to intoxication. <laughs> <laughs> the mountains. Let's go to the mountains. It's so, so beautiful. I will write Ode to the Andes. Thank God. Isolda. Huh? You're so soft. What do you mean? You're like an animal or a peach. Isn't she soft, Leo? Let me feel. It's true. I'm very soft. Mmm. Can you see my veins? Is my skin thin? Look how thin my skin is. What does that mean? Am I? Is thin skin on the outside thin skin on the inside? Who knows these things? Um, let's go in there. The supermarket? It really is such a beautiful supermarket. We should get a bottle of red wine. Mmm. Some cheese, empanadas. Yes. Leche condensada. One can, three spoons. Do you have money? Fingers. I love your fingers. They're so small. Watch. If you hold my hand up in the light, can you see through it? Soli, one can, three spoons. Yeah, I'm going into the supermarket. Soon, everyone will go to the supermarket. That'll be fun. Soon, every kid will go to school. Am I see-through? Medicine, clean water, it's so basic. Basic human kindness. Did you know that when you touch a frog, its whole body feels like it's being cut with razor blades? The supermarket. Do we seem capable of being in a supermarket? Their skin is that sensitive. Soli. Yes? Until now, the Chilean government has been... not human? Inhuman? Yes! Inhuman! Wow. Exactly. What do you think, Leo? I think what you think. Yes. The people united can never be defeated. We are Chile. Venceremos, venceremos. La unidad popular al poder. Bum, bum, bum. Do you think I could climb that tree? You're Chilean. You can do anything. <laughs> Will it always be this good? Right here it will. This is the moment in time. Before consequences, before guilt, before the spine begins to curve down, shorter, inch by inch, every day till death eats the bone. Before the reality of regret, missed opportunities, stifled talent and squandered love cast every daybreak a different shade of sad. This is youth. Anything is possible. And that is the end of part one of Leo by Rosa Laborde. Stay tuned for part two. On this episode, you heard Augusto Bitter as Leo, Arlene Aguayo Stewart as Isolda, Carlos Gonzalez Bio as Rodrigo, and Francesca Centelli as Leo's mother. Direction by Carlos Diaz. Original sound design by Thomas Ryder Payne. New music by Marcelo Puente. Production, editing, and additional sound design by Charles Ketchaba and Adam Mickman. Translation and script coordination by Bruce Gibbons Fell. Season 1 theme music by Brandon Valdivia. Radio Luna Theater is produced by Aluna Theater with the support from the Met Cal Foundation, the City of Toronto, the Canada Council for the Arts, the Ontario Arts Council, the Toronto Arts Council, 
and Playwrights Workshop Montreal's Glasgow Translation Residency in Tadoussac. Alumna Theatre is Beatriz Pisano and Trevor Schwellness with Sue Ballant and Gia Namis. For more information about Aluna, visit us at alunatheater.ca. Follow Aluna Theatre on Twitter or Instagram or just like us on Facebook. And this March, from the 7th to the 24th, join us at Theater Pass Murai for the premiere of Chicho, a new play written and performed by Augusto Bitter, who you've just heard voicing Leo in this radio production. For more information about Chicho and for tickets, visit alunatheater.ca. See you there. Our next podcast will be out very soon. Hasta muy pronto.